Yeah, Shalom. Giving all praise to you, by Shem by Shem Kakodash. And let me open this tab here. Give me a second. Bear me for a minute. Boom, I think I got it. Okay, this is, um, I'm going to entitle this uh, one or this video um, Christians don't all speak the same thing. So we know based on my title that um, the Lord is definitely not dealing with you Christians. You know, you have this guy, uh, Vocab Malone, you know, with his brand of Christianity, which is not true Christianity. The true, the true Christians are um, Israelites, pursuant to the book of Acts. Um, I believe that's Acts 11, verse 26. I mean, you can read it. You can put it in the description box. No big deal. But the word Christian is written in the scriptures a couple of times. Anyway, um, the true Christians are Israelites that have accepted the Messiah. Now the title, Christians don't all speak the same thing, is based upon the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, where the apostle Paul said that you all must speak the same thing. Anyway, what I did was, I go to this uh, commentary. What I'll do is I'll take a precept. In this case, I, I took uh, Daniel 7, verse 6, which we should all know. If you don't know, you know, if you've been in this truth for any length of time and you don't know Daniel chapter 7, then that's a damn shame. You got to know these uh these breakdowns, as we call them, interp and, and to interpret uh, certain prophetic scriptures where um, Vocab and his crew, they don't understand the prophecies. Anyway, um, we should all know Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. which that's supposed to be the Greeks after the uh, fall of the um, the medial Persian Empire. You know, that's your history. That's your secular history. Anyway, I went to the commentary and the first one I went to was Cambridge, a Bible for schools and colleges and I read through that and I said, <laughs> most of the time they're on point, but they were definitely, they were definitely not on point on, um, or they weren't even close. So I went to Benson commentary and I'll just read it. Boy, I can't get it right. Uh, uh, here we go. Benson commentary, Daniel 7, verse 6. It says, after this, I beheld and lo, another like a, like a leopard, uh, this third kingdom. And the ki kingdoms are ruled by men. You have a, a monarchy, you have a, a king, and then you have his lords, and then you have his subjects. Is that is that of a is that of the Macedonians or Grecians who under the command of Alexander the Greek or great it says here overcame the Persians which you had a twofold 
Empire, the Medio Persians, the, Med the Medes came up first, and the Persians came up second and became a dom a more dominant than the uh, the Medes. So when you go into the hic secular history, it's the Medio Persian Empire that came after the uh, downfall of the uh, the Babylonian Empire, which were Assyrians. You know, High Priest Ariad the Seven used to teach that the king of Babylon or the kings of Babylon at that time were Ethiopian. They were not Ethiopian, they were Assyrian. Because it the um when you go to Daniel seven and you read from the first verse down to like into the third, second, third verse, you know, it says how a, a lion with eagle's eagle's wings it stood up, stood up, and a man's mind was given to it. Well, that was the Assyrians. That lion represents the Assyrian Empire, which became uh, greater than the Babylonians became greater than the Assyrians, but it was the same people. It was the same, just, just different rulers. So, so the uh, king of Babylon, the kings of Babylon were not uh, Ethiopian. They were not Cushite. They were Assyrian. It says, and reigned, and reigned next after them, and it is fitly compared to a leopard upon several accounts. The leopard is remarkable for swiftness, and Alexander, Alexander, and the Macedonians, because who came out of Macedon? Alexander's uh, father. That's in the Apocrypha. In the uh, first uh, Maccabees, the first chapter. Because, that, because there was a split. You had Edomites go back or stay in, in Mount Seir or Petra. And then you had some Edomites go up in the Macedon. So there was a split there. That's where the, the Roman Empire came from. The Romans, the Roman uh, rulership and the Roman people, the original Roman people, which were so-called white people, were descendants of Edomites, but they didn't know that they were Edomites. When they were dealing with uh, a Herod the Great in um, the Herodian dynasty, they said, well, those are Edomites over there. And they would say about themselves that they're the Romans. They didn't understand that they that they were actually descendants of Esau, just like today. This is why, hey, this is why Vocab says the Edomites were done away with. He has no real answer. You know, where's the proof that they were done away with? The Edomites are in the in, in the uh, power seat right now. And they're getting ready to go down. That's why you don't accept the apocrypha. What does it say in um, uh, Second Edges? Was that Second Edges six and nine? Esau is the beginning of the world, and Jacob is the, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So Esau is in the power seat. Jacob Jacob is not in the power seat. It says um, the leopard is remarkable for swiftness, and Alexander the Macedon the Macedonians were. Amazing, amazingly uh, swift and rap, uh, rapid in their conquest. Yeah, because he moved, it says, I believe that's uh, Daniel, the eighth chapter, and he touched not the ground, meaning he, he took this, the medial Persian down quickly. You know, his time of rule was from the age of 20, to the age of 32, and then he died, he got sick, and he died. The Mosai, um, you know, gave him a, a disease that he couldn't, couldn't heal because that was his job, that was his lot. So this, you know, we, we have a saying, if you don't know the history, you, you can't know the mystery. So you have to go into the history. That's why Christians, you ask any regular Christian, Going to Daniel 7, they're not going to be able, 
look, vocab won't be able to add, uh, answer, um, break down, uh, or give you understanding of Daniel the seventh chapter or any of the prophetic books. It's a deliberate, is a spotted animal who was, who, and so was a, a proper em, emblem according to a bochart, a bochart of the different manners of the nations which Alexander commanded, or according to Grotius of the, I gotta look those names up, of the various manners of Alexander himself, who was uh, sometimes merciful. Right, he was merciful to the Israelites because he had a, a vision of seeing a head, the head priest and the uh, army of priests behind him. And uh, sometimes cruel, uh, sometimes uh, temperate, and sometimes drunken, sometimes abstinous, as, <laughs> abstemious, and sometimes incontinent, the leopard, or, or as, excuse me, Bochart observes is of small statue, but a but of great courage, so as not to be afraid to engage with the lion and the larger beast. And so Alexander, a little king, right, oh, that's also in Daniel 8 chapter, you know, it speaks about the little horn. Ultimately, he's talking about uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. But Alexander, that was a small kingdom that came out of Macedonia. And became great. Why? Because of prophecy. Most I put the spirit on him to take the medial Persians down. In comparison of a small statue too, and with a small army, uh, they showed you that in the movie 300, that the 300 men went up against this vast army. You had a group of men called the, um, the immortals, because there were so many of them when you would kill a certain lot of them, then it would then it would be replaced by other men. So it looked like they never died. They said the uh, the red dared to attack the king of kings. Yeah, that was uh, Darius. That was Darius, whose kingdom was extended from the Aegean Sea to the Indies. Aegean Sea to the Indies which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The Babylonian empire was represented with two wings. Right, I spoke about that in the beginning of the video, but this is described with four, for as Jerome says, for as Jerome says, nothing was swifter than the victories of Alexander. Like I said, he moved quick. He took down that vast uh, kingdom inside of 12 years. He took over that known world inside of 12 years and died. Who ran through all the countries. And this, and this is how we know that the scriptures, you can't, you can't make this book. You can't compare this book to any other book on the planet. This is the scriptures or the Bible is the only book that speaks about the uh, the MOTB. No other book. So when it comes to prophetic books, the uh, the only real, true prophetic book is the scriptures. Okay, I lost my place. Okay, it says uh, it described with four uh, four. For as uh, Jerome says, nothing was swifter than the uh, victories of Alexander, who ran through all the countries uh, from um, Eli Illyricum in the Adriatic Sea to the Indian Ocean and to the river Ganges, uh, not so much fighting as conquering. And in six years, he should have said in 12, subjugated part of the part of Europe 
and Europe was named after black women. The whole story of Europa is uh, a myth where um, Zeus wanted to uh, entice this woman named Europa and, he, and he came down in the form of a white bull. So you, you people that call yourself Europeans, you're not even Europeans. <laughs> Europe, Europeans would, you had Jake's all up in Europe, the Japhetic people, then you had the Israelites and all Asia to himself. The beast had also four heads to denote the four kingdoms in, into which this same third kingdom, okay, it's a third kingdom. You notice it's that third kingdom, the Babylonians, the Medio Persians, and the Macedonian or the Greek empire is a third kingdom. So these Edomite so-called Christian scholars, they know, they know the history. It says should be divided as it was after the death of Alexander among his four captains, Cassandra reigning over Macedon and Greece, Lasimaeus over uh, Thra Thrace and Bithynia, Bithynia, Ptolemy over Egypt, and Seleuc Seleucus over Syria. Now you had a series of wars, and there were six of them called the uh, uh, the Syrian Wars. It was between the king of the north and the king of the south. Ptolemy and Ptolemy's uh, line, sons and sons' sons, and uh, Seleucus and, and his line of uh, uh, sons. And the menu was given to it which shows, as Jerome observes, that it was not owing, I lost my, owing to the uh, fortitude of Alexander, but proceeded from the will of the Lord, proceeded from the, proceeded, pre, proceeded from the will of the Lord. That's why Alexander got sick, couldn't, couldn't be healed, and he died. He died at the age of 32. It said, proceeded from the will of the Lord, and indeed, unless he had been directed, preserved and assisted by the mighty power of the Most High, who, how could Alexander with 30,000 men have overcome Darius with 600,000? And, and in so short of time have brought all the countries from Greece as far as to India into subjection. So that's all I wanted to uh, go into on that. Like I said, some of these, when you go to the commentary, when you go to a Bible hub and you put in the scripture, you have, I don't know, maybe anywhere from eight to 10 commentaries according to these various groups. And sometimes they're on point and sometimes they're off. And then even among these groups, like you got Benson commentary, you got a, let me bring this back up. You got a Cambridge Bible of the schools and colleges. You got Ellicott commentary for English readers. But they all have a different a breakdown, a different understanding, a, a, a different uh, interpretation. Okay, it says here, Daniel 8 and 8. Let's see what Daniel 8 and 8 says. Therefore, the, the he goat, right, and, and Daniel 8, he was known as, also known as the he goat, whacked very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And I'm, I'm not going to read this, this uh, commentary, but the best one, the one that's on point is Benson, a commentary. Oh, and this is why, you know, Esau you know, he pretty much content, condemns the uh, Apocrypha, you know, because the, the Apocrypha names names. 
you know, it names uh, the father. Matter of fact, let me do this. Let me do this. Bear with me for a minute. Just want to bring this up. Okay, it says here, uh, 1 Maccabees 1, verse 1, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, and Chittim is, today is, is called um, uh, Cyprus, which is uh, north of the uh, boot of Italy. There's an island, I would say, uh, I'm south, <laughs> south of the uh, boot of Italy. Uh, that's the land Chittim, which is now known today as Cy uh, Cyprus, um, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes. Did not we read that in the, in the, uh, the commentary? That he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. It says, um, and made many wars and won many strongholds, and he did it quick, did it inside the 12 years and died, and slew the kings of the earth, meaning the kings of the earth, the rulers at that time was the medial Persian empire, and went through to the ends of the earth. Now, did he go to the actual ends of, no, that he went to that region of the earth, and took spoils of many nations, and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted in his heart, was lifted up and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries taxes they when they take you over they tax your ass that's what this is what the romans did and tributaries meaning you can keep your religion he allowed israel to go to the temple to keep the laws the laws statutes and commandments but it was uh it was uh, Antiochus Epiphanes that said, no, you can't keep your laws. See, Alexander allowed those people to keep their laws. It says, um, and nations and kings who, be, who became tributaries unto him will let you live your life as long as you pay taxes. Now, when you go into the history, it says that he didn't tax Israel. He was pretty much kissing the ass because he saw that vision. And the, and the priest, that's in the Josephus, showed him that he's a guy in the book of Daniel. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Uh, wherefore, he called his servants, which were the four, the four wings, the four heads, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. He died at the age of 32. Um, and his servants bear rule over everyone in his, pl in his place. And after his uh, death, they all put crowns upon, pardoned themselves. So did their sons after them many years the evils were multiplied in the earth. So when Esau came on the, on the scene, evils were multiplied on the earth. Uh, anyway, I'm going to say uh, Shalom. I just wanted to go through that. Spirit was on me to, to deal with it. But this just shows you that among these so-called Christian groups and these scholars, they all have their own opinion of the scriptures. And that proves you that the Most High is not dealing with them. And if anything, vocab should be going after these other Christians, not after us. But he's set up to do that. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.